Now, following the International AIDS Conference last week, there's still much talk about Lina Kapavir. This is a twice yearly injection that activists say is critical in the fight against HIV. Availability is now the big issue. Professor Linda Gale Becker, UCT Desmond Tutu HIV Centre Deputy Director, joins us now to discuss this further. Good evening, Professor. Thank you very much for joining us on The Full View. Now, many HIV activists are quite excited about this finding. You have actually been quoted as saying this jab holds the promise of a significant shift in the global fight against HIV AIDS. Talk to us about this. Certainly. Um, for now, the most important thing we can do now in the response is try to turn off new infections. And new infections are mostly happening amongst young people who struggle to take a daily pill. So besides our usual prevention options, we do have daily oral prep, mm -hmm. but this requires daily activities and young people struggle to do that. So this gives us a new and very exciting option. Mm -hmm. Let's just delve deeper into the struggles thereof, because when we're talking about that PrEP, it's the pre-exposure prophylaxis or Truvada, as many would know it. It was introduced exactly to do what this injection was doing. You're saying that the reason it hasn't yielded very positive results is because most people that are not infected would not want to take a pill every single day. Yeah, you know, I think it's that old adage that if you're not sick, you may not want to take pills. Um, and the, the thing with young people who are preventing HIV is they feel very strong and invincible. Um, so, you know, that first of all, just getting their heads around taking a pill every day and then secondly, remembering to include it in their daily lives is 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 challenging. Mm -hmm. And so we find young people start, but they stop after a few weeks or months. And, and this is when we see breakthrough infection again. Mm -hmm. And then the accept accessibility thereof, because for us as journalists who followed the first trial for PrEP and continue to report on it until it reached pharmacies, we still were would find ourselves in a situation where we would be engaging with people who didn't have a clue that there was this pre-exposure prophylaxis. So would you say it was accessible enough or there was enough communication around a drug that was preventing contracting HIV? I think like any new intervention, it needs real demand creation. And I'm not sure we really have done that. If you compare what we did during COVID to get people to be vaccinated, you know, we have done nothing on that scale, despite the fact that we are a country that has the biggest HIV problem in the world. And every week, many, many young people in our country become newly infected. So I do think there has been a lack in that regard. But when we actually do offer it to young people, we see in our programs that they there's acceptance and uptake, but quite soon that falls off. And I think that is just about doing something daily when you're young and you've got a lot going on in your life. Mm -hmm. But then with this new finding, how do we ensure that we don't see a repeat with the PrEP? Where here it's exposed to as many people as possible. And most importantly, is it accessible in so far as purchasing this? Well, I think that's where the next few months uh, will really matter. We have to see what the price of the drug is, and then we need to see, will our government procure it? Uh, will we be able to get it into the public sector? And will it be widely available? I think if so, then we have to be sure we're promoting it as, as much as we can. And the wonderful thing is now young people really only have to make a decision twice every year to go in and have the injection. So it really does does unburden the user hopefully it unburdens the health system as well and mm -hmm. we really hope that you know South Africa takes advantage of this mm -hmm. and then to the drug itself let's talk about its efficacy I was watching an interview where one doctor stated that for him it was quite hundred percent it seemed that when tested especially in the country a number of people especially in Ghana as well that none of them contracted the virus Yes, so the, the phase three trial is actually Uganda, uh, not Ghana, oh, it was yes, in Uganda, Uganda and Uganda. South mm. Africa. Mm. Yeah, so two countries, 28 sites involving 5,000 women aged 16 to 25. Um, we found no infections in the arm uh, that it was a randomized control trial. The women who were assigned to the Lena Kapavir arm, uh, they did not experience a single infection over the 
it was a median of one year of follow-up, so, you know, not long. But we, for ethical reasons, our DSMB met and decided that it was just such a stark contrast with oral PrEP that um, the study needed to stop its randomized phase and now offer the injectable to all of the participants. So we're in the process of doing that at this moment. Mm -hmm. And then side effects, did any of them experience side effects? Because most people are still quite apprehensive if they have no disease to be taking any form of medication. So I'm sure many of them are keen to know about the side effects. You're absolutely right. When we're giving something to healthy young people, we definitely don't want to cause problems. Um, it's a very clean drug in that result, in that case. Uh, of course, it's a needle. It's an injection. So people did describe what we call injection site reactions, and that included pain um, to a certain extent, a little nodule, because when you inject the, the uh, volume of medication, it sits just under the skin. And then over time, that dissolves out. So initially, people could feel the little nodule, not always, but in some people. Um, and then, of course, uh, you know, even the pain dissipated over time. So that probably is the, the thing people need to get over the most is, is the fact that it's a needle and there's some pain Wonderful. associated. So, Professor, when do we expect a rollout? What is the phase now? Where are we? So we finished the phase three in young cisgender women. There is a large trial underway in the world, including here in South Africa, among cisgender men, uh, transgender women and uh, transgender men, non-binary people who have sex with other men. This is another very important uh, sort of set of populations who are at risk of HIV acquisition. When that trial reads out, and we hope that is before the end of the year, the results of both trials will be needed to be put in front of the FDA, SAPRA, and the Uganda regulators and other regulators around the world. And then once we have um, licensure, of course, the important work starts to try and get the, the voluntary licenses to generic companies because it is there then that we'll see the price come down. But mm. Gilead has promised that they will make the drug available to us here in South Africa at a not-for-profit price. So we look forward to seeing that. Mm. What a promising time ahead. Professor, thank you very much for joining us on The Full View. That was Professor Linda Gale Becker, UCT Desmond Dudu HIV Centre Deputy Director, speaking to us.